the equation of the parabola that looks something like this. And let, let's, let's actually try that again, shall we? Here we go. Okay, not too bad. And let's suppose that the vertex here is at negative seven, negative three, and that this random point is at negative 118. And we want to complete the vertex form. So this stylus that I have is not the best one. I'll try to get a better one next time. But let's see, we know what H and K are. Can I switch colors? Let's see. A, let's go. So this is gonna be H here. So that's gonna be negative seven. And then K is negative three. So let's make these changes. Let's plug in the H and K and let's update our equation. So this gives us Y equals A. The double negative turns it into a positive. Yeah, I really need a better stylus. <laughs> and now look, we, we've plugged in H and K. So the H and the K have been filled in. Now you use the random point and plug in those coordinates in for, for X and Y. And that'll give us the ability to solve for this mysterious coefficient called A. So we would get 18 here. And then X is negative one for now. Okay. Let me add a three to this side. And then in the parentheses, that's a six squared. So 21 equals 36A. Divide by 36. Reduce the fraction. And we discover that this would be 7 twelfths. So if you reduce by three, if you reduce this fraction by threes, you get seven twelfths. And now we'll take this seven twelfths and it'll be deposited right there. So for number one, part A, our final answer for the equation for F would be as follows. We have F of X equals seven twelfths. And then we said X plus seven squared take away three. So this is have a like a rectangle button. Let's see, let me change the colors so here. Let's try blue. Pretty cool, nice. All right, so that there, that is 1A, where you have to write the equation of the given parabola. So now for, now let, let's see, can I erase here? Well, that's pretty cool. Yeah, so let me erase all these things here. We don't, we don't need these for the next part. Now we can go and find the intercepts. So let's suppose that we want to find now the y-intercept. Well, recall, folks, that to find your y-intercept, if we focus here on our y-intercept, here we go, what you do is you put a zero in for x. So let's write the original equation again, this one here. Let's write this down again, but instead of x, put a zero. And this would give us y equals seven twelfths, zero plus seven squared, take away three. And as I always say, just go to your calculators for that. Just tap that into your devices and it'll be whatever the answer key said for that there. I mean, if you have a calculator, you can just type that in. Let's see, that should be something like, it says 307 over 12. Okay. So that'll be for your y-intercept. So jot that down there if you'd like. Now, for the x-intercept, what we're going to do is we're going to put a zero in for y. So we'll write down this equation again, but we'll put a zero in instead of the f of x. So that'll be zero equals 7 twelfths. Then we have x plus 7 squared take away 3. Okay. Now I'm going to move the negative three to the other side and I will erase my previous work with the y-intercept. Let's get that out of the way. And so here, let's see here. So we would get positive three, then seven twelfths, x plus seven squared. Now what we can do is we can get rid of this fraction by multiplying both sides by its reciprocal. Well, times both sides by seven, by 12 over seven, both sides. 
because here these knock out. And on the left, we have back in blue, we have 36 over seven equals x plus seven squared. Okay. And then we can square root. Right? We can square root like that there. And we get we get plus or minus. We get plus or minus that fraction there, the square root of that fraction. And then on the other side, we would have left just x plus seven. And so why don't you subtract seven, subtract seven. And it looks like we would get this. We would get our x-intercepts would be as follows. It would be negative seven plus or minus the square root of 36 sevenths comma zero. So that there, if I use a rectangle, let's use a pink rectangle. This here, that contains your two X intercepts. And after that, they wanted the domain and range. So let's see, why don't I erase some of this up here and we can go through the domain and the range and then we can tell them the end behavior and that'll complete this exercise. So let's see, let me get this out of the way here. Now for the domain, we discussed in the past that for the, for the domain of a parabola, it's gonna be all real numbers denoted by this symbol. Right? Any number that's real can be plugged into this parabola and you'll always get back something for y. But not every y value, not every y coordinate is represented by this picture. After all, what is the lowest point that this parabola can go down to? The lowest point is negative three. So my range, if I start to build my range, range is lowest to highest. The lowest y coordinate you can achieve would be negative three. And then th this graph goes up toward the sky forever. And so the highest y coordinate would be limitless. It'd be infinity, right? For my domain and range. Okay, so for my domain would be all real numbers. For my domain, all real numbers. But my range, the lowest is negative three inclusive because I actually pass through negative three, which is why there's a bracket and it goes up, up, up forever. So this is my lowest and this is my highest. Now, finally, for the end behavior, so I'll just abbreviate it EB. For my end behavior, we always go like this. As we go to the left, comma, the graph, well, let's see what happens. What does the graph do as you move to the left? If you were to follow this roller coaster moving to the left, the graph is going up, 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 up. And so f of x, the y coordinates would also go up. As x approaches infinity, in other words, this means as you go to the right, right? This means as you go to the right, this means as you go to the left. So this basically refers to the left arrow and this refers to the right arrow. The left arrow is this one and it pointed up. Hence, infinity. This refers to the right arrow, in essence. The right arrow points up, which is why here I should also say up. So I'm going to say f of x approaches infinity as well.